Hi, I'm John Hunter. And I'm Bob Monder. In this video, we are going to lead you through a practical approach to coping with stress. In this case, we are talking about the stress that healthcare workers may experience during the outbreak of COVID-19. It is inevitable that this outbreak will cause anxiety. A good place to start is by distinguishing between what we know and what we don't know. The nature of the situation is that there is uncertainty about how it will evolve. The things that we are coping with will change as the situation develops. However, some things are known which makes this situation quite different than the outbreak of SARS in 2003. This time, we know exactly which virus is causing infections and we have a test for it. Cases are being identified quickly and we have learned a lot about effective protective equipment and procedures. We also know from previous experiences that as this situation evolves, rumors and misinformation will circulate. Inaccurate stories often increase anxiety. It's important to get information about the developing outbreak from authoritative sources. We are going to give you a way of thinking about coping that works for just about any kind of stress, and then we are going to apply those principles to the situation you are facing now. This approach to coping is based on evidence. Most of what it teaches seems like common sense, but common sense can be hard to come by when we are feeling very stressed. We're going to give you an organized way to think about some of the most useful approaches to coping. Knowing how to cope in an organized way allows you to make considered choices about how to react to stress instead of responding automatically. Experts have described an approach to coping that goes in steps, and the steps go in order. You only go on to step two if step one hasn't worked. The steps are defined by your goal, what you are focusing on. Step one is problem-focused coping. This is where we always start. The goal here is to try to fix a problem that is causing stress. This approach only makes sense for problems that are under your control. If dealing directly with the problem is not enough, perhaps because you're dealing with a problem that is not under your control, then move on to step two, which is emotion-focused coping. The goal here is to feel better about problems you can't fix. Finally, there's the kind of coping we use the least. We save it for challenges that cause enduring suffering of one kind or another, when neither trying to fix the problem nor trying to feel better is enough. That is when we focus our efforts on finding meaning. We can break those three steps down a bit, starting with problem-focused coping, the type of coping that most of us use most often. Some of the most constructive approaches are to work on practical ways to solve the problem. To break big, unmanageable challenges down into easier pieces and do one thing at a time. To learn about the challenge by seeking out information or getting training in useful skills. And to communicate clearly with others so that we can combine our efforts to solve the problem. Remember that clear communication means making yourself understood, but also listening well. Some of the most helpful things we can do to feel better and function better are things we do with other people. Accepting support from others is very helpful, and offering support has benefits for both the giver and the receiver. Try to avoid things that are likely to inflame the situation, like focusing on who to blame for things that have gone wrong. A sense of humor is always valuable, and it is crucial to maintain your reserves by caring for your health and respecting your personal and professional limits. Finally, for circumstances where there is no realistic way to solve the problem or to feel better about it, we have to dig a little deeper and rely on our personal values and sense of meaning to put things in perspective. Often, the place to start is to explicitly accept that it just isn't helping anymore to try and solve the problem. That allows you to reflect on how to make sense of your dilemma and reflect on the things that make your life and work valuable, even in the hardest times. Some people find their faith to be very helpful with this kind of coping. Now we are going to apply these steps in a really practical way to coping with the stress of the current situation. When dealing with the stress of an infectious outbreak, as with any other stress, we need to approach coping in a sensible, logical way. We start by protecting ourselves and minimizing personal risk, which in this case means having supplies of protective equipment, clear policies and procedures, 
and having effective training in those procedures. We use our experience and working relationships with colleagues to solve the complications that inevitably arise because each workplace is at least a little different than others. Very importantly, we reduce our risk and our stress by getting the facts about what we are dealing with. People who lack knowledge about unfamiliar infectious diseases often react to what they are afraid of instead of dealing with the actual challenges. It takes discipline and calm reflection to step back and rely on the best knowledge available. We can't emphasize enough the importance of respectful, assertive dialogue and active, careful listening. There are also many things we can do to keep us healthy and resilient as possible. Asking for help and support are very powerful sources of strength. We learned from our experiences with SARS how infectious diseases can lead people to be isolated from each other. Support and teamwork are powerful forces to bolster our strength, so we need to be watchful that we do not isolate ourselves unnecessarily. We need to tend to each other's needs and avoid acting in ways that increase tension and conflict. It also helps to know in advance that things are going to change as the situation evolves. New directions need not be a sign of failure. More likely, they are the signs of a system adapting exactly as it should to new information. We are fortunate to have a lot of experience and expertise as a team. And remember to take action to stay healthy. Protect your sleep and your healthy diet. Take the breaks that your body and mind need. Look after yourself. Finally, if the situation feels too much, it can help to think about why we do the work we have chosen. Healthcare workers are privileged to do work that is more meaningful than many of the alternatives. When we face challenges and risks that are unique to our roles, it can help to pause to remember what led us to do this work in the first place. So that's it, a stepwise, evidence-based approach to coping with extraordinary stress. We hope you find it helpful, and remember, we're all in this together.